So now we're at element number five. So we have the individuating hero that divides itself from the grand collective and sees itself as itself. And then it reflects that in all the world underneath it, all the setting, and all the world around it. Um, he has desire, which is going to fuel the paradox of his life, what he sees as ascension and what he sees as descension. And now he's looking around in his life and he wants to be the champion. He wants to strive to be on the top of his game. Now we come to element number five, which is going to be the idea of Venus. She's so high, high like Cleopatra, Joan of Arc, or Aphrodite. So, this is Venus, this is Eve, um, but Eve and Venus are going to come with a whole bunch of bag of tricks. So we go back to his desire of what's in resonance with the fixed waters of Scorpio. And the, the, uh, on the other side of Scorpio is Taurus, which is a person's idea of aesthetics and beauty and harmony and what looks appealing to them. So there's an attractive force between Mars, which is the Aries energy, the individuated hero, and the Venus archetype in, in, in their life, what is attracting them. Now the individuating hero could be female, and then the attraction could be to males around them. Um, but in, in mythology, it's best represented by um, Eve and Venus and Aphrodite. Um, but Venus is also going to have, um, at, at least in my understanding of story structure, the elements of um, a Pisces decadent um, constellation, which is Andromeda, who is the chained woman. Um, now we're trying to pick out the actual point of attraction here. Um, this is the idea of the princess uh, held captive in a castle where there's a dragon out front and you're the only one who can save her and bring her down. Really, she's the only one who can save her. She has to vibrate with a situation where um, uh, she's in harmony uh, with the rest of her situation. But how Andromeda works reflecting the individuating hero is she is his object of affection and also a muse towards understanding all of the rest of the life. The idea of breaking into two um, and, and living off of that inspiration. Um, but what's going to chain her are going to be the hounds of hell and the panthers of torment. Um, all the mean uh, people who uh, keep her oppressed and keep her down and keep her away. And these are going to look to the hero as, um, as to find the champion within them to rectify the situation for Venus, uh, Aphrodite, she, Andromeda, the, the mystery, um, the mystery uh, of of, of uh, attraction and love and um, good emotions of, of that sort. So now the character um, has a relationship with Venus itself, um, but also Andromeda. So whatever is holding her back is going to be the will, the desire of the hero to rectify and stand up for it. So now, going back to all the elements of desire down into fear, repression, and the um, wonder walls or the um, Narnias that are associated on each parallel reality, now he's going to come with a new bag of tricks. He's going to come with the energy of Andromeda and stick up for her in all the situations uh, that he has the courage to be the champion under. 
So the life uh, between Mars and Venus is they'll begin to um, intermingle, they'll begin to reflect each other's ideas uh, without the pictures uh, when they're gone, but they'll still um, have a, a telepathic kind of connection that then um, is half of the experience that you will. Your tears don't fall, they, they crash around you. You take a walk and you see what these new, what your software is um, reflecting Venus uh, as the chained woman and your relationship to the idea of chains, the idea of boundaries, and the idea of saying, you know what, I am a champion. Nobody did it before, but I'm going to break those boundaries. The paradox of our love relationship is enough to have global implications of what can be done. And any, any race, if she is my car, I will win the race. And I have the confidence to say that in any and every situation. You break me in front of a policeman. You break me in front of the military. You break me in front of mothers and fathers. You break me there and still I will re reflect the idea of, of uh, appreciation and ascension in subjects um, well first of all uh, that that's going to be probably the next archetype the cancer archetype of some of the first impressions in life um, the the um, I'll call it something different when I get into it um, and how they reflect of course all the lower of Scorpio spikes um, things that may make you ill, may make you itch. And when you think of them, it's so far out of bounds with where your mind has evolved to that the, the situation brings about an uprising, another Muse song within, within the uh, old Matrix, and that's the way you take Matrixes up the scale. Turn down for what, of course. So... Element number five in the series is that beautiful um, woman, uh, Africa, but uh, she's also the whore of Babylon because she doesn't appeal to logic, she appeals to emotion. So she's very confusing, and when people don't reflect, they reflect her as separate from themselves. They go out to the Main Street Square and they say, you don't reflect me. Um, in a group of random people who have no understanding of who she is, you tell her to all those people, you don't reflect me. Um, and, and so she remains Andromeda. She is the, the whore of Babylon because she is uh, elusive. The girl was never there. It's always the same. I'm running towards nothing again and again and again and again. So, Venus is definitely a, a beautiful morning star, um, and uh, she lights up the way. She lights the way, and she leads the way. She's the maps and the directions to um, your own unlocking of your own uh, excitement. So, that is element number five, Venus.